dig it? Can you dig it? Can you dig it? Yo, Shia LaBeouf freestyling on Sway Show? Ridiculous. Yeah, I, did, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that one. You don't think he has bars? Yeah, nah. He, he mm, the first beat was okay, but like, he, you can't go on a show and just be like, oh, my fingers are pocket biggie. Like, are you serious? Like, uh, yeah, but you sound like everybody. <laughs> he's not expected to go on a show and like tear it up. I mean, but like, like, you, 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 you say, oh. Biggie and Pac are my favorites, and then you come on and spit the worst shit ever. All right, so here's the thing: when when when, when hip hop guys go like on on a sway show or any kind of morning show, breakfast club, whatever it is, sometimes they're spitting lines that they've already said in other verses. It's not even that. It's just like 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 some people can't like just do it off the top, so they'll like like think of some shit they recently wrote or think of some shit that they haven't released yet or like that's coming like i don't know just some people can't stick to it there's a dude i want like, this is on tiktok or youtube white boy and he goes around like like in new york harry mac is that him the the dude that's just like yo give me a word yeah, he's yeah, like, yeah, one yeah. word harry mac yeah. is insane yo, that dude, <laughs> harry mac is nuts. Like, he's like give me one word and do it and he just, and he just right kills there. it yeah so when shia like, labeouf goes goes on sway he's he's trying to do that and great he's not yeah. that good but he's not that bad. I thought you'd have more respect for him because he was like Tyler, the, or not Tyler, um, Kid Cudi's best friend. I didn't even know that. <laughs> you didn't watch the documentary? No, I didn't finish that. Dude, how do you love Kid Cudi, but you don't You don't go, you're like, oh, Kid Cudi's my favorite artist of all time, but you won't go watch a documentary to look into the life of a guy that you idolize? Because Kid Cudi's, like, I don't know, like, Kid Cudi's great, and he was definitely in my top three before, but I feel like I found so much better talent not even better talent. Dude, just, you, you got a fucking t-shirt that says, Kid Cudi saved my life. Because <laughs> it's true. Okay. So but he's not in your top five? Okay. He's like my honorable mention. He's like... He's Wait, like, what the fuck? How does he go into your honorable mention? Not even honorable mention. So, like, if you're saying top five, then he's like six. So, who's in your top five? Kanye, mm -hmm. one. Tyler, two. Frank Ocean, three. Frank Ocean has, like, two albums. And both of them are flawless. To you. One of them has a Grammy. One of them is the most critically acclaimed album. Could be ever. Like, oh, looking at him right fucking now. MF Doom. <laughs> MF Doom is top five. Mad Villainy is one of the greatest albums of all time. I could look at that right there and be like, flawless album. So you're saying Kanye? Kanye, Kanye, Tyler, Frank, Doom, Doom, Brent Fias. Brent Fias? Yeah. You're putting Brent Fines before Kid Cudi? Dude, you're out of your mind. All right, I love the Man on the Moon series. Man on the Moon 1 and 2, flawless albums. But they have skips. Uh, Man on the Moon 1 doesn't have that many skips. Man on the Moon 2 has a few skips. Nah. Mm, go back and listen to the album, you'll find a few skips. I, I don't know them by name, but I, I'm pretty sure. I used to work out to Man on the Moon 2. That's what I'm saying. I don't think it has skips. Yeah, but it's like, I don't know. It's just got that... It's got that vibe, but it doesn't feel that way throughout the entire Brett album. Brett doesn't even have a body of work that compares to Kid Cudi. Yeah, I, yeah. I'm Saunders so Son compares to... It might not be the same genre, but Saunders Son is uh, the magnum opus right. of r and I'm, I'm not Traditional saying, r and I'm not saying the quality of the work. But it's not the quality. I'm saying the, the this, just, just the body of work as a collective like all of his albums together Brent Fires isn't there yet he uh, he's not on the come up he's not but there he's not yet there. but if on his first album that he released on SoundCloud is a 10 out of 10 flawless album with no skips I think that that how many albums does he have uh he has an EP three albums like uh an EP with like four or five songs a full album, which is what I was talking about. Then the other one's technically an album, but it's only like five, six, seven songs. And then his recent album that dropped a couple months ago. Okay, but you compare it to oh, Cuddy's. But I'm work, like, okay, but that spans also, over ten right, years. All right, so but if we ratio bad album Cuddy, bad album Cuddy, bad Cuddy albums to good Cuddy albums. What's a bad Cuddy album? <laughs> Oh, oh. Satellite okay. Flight. 
I would say Passion Pain and Demon Slain if it wasn't a full. Like I don't know, Passion Pain and Demon Slain's got a cut, huh? Sponsors. Oh, uh, Seagrams. Get on know. that. Get on that. Yo, uh, you're not a sponsor, but you could be. You could be. Yeah, could be. So. Um. Yeah, but like, Satellite Flight is a is a is a is a honestly Satellite Flight is a miss. The only song that hits on Satellite Flight, which honestly the only reason it's big is because it's not even a it, it wasn't even big on the album it was. Remember that song on the the unreleased Kanye album? Uh, people talk shit about me. Oh, that's my favorite. Yeah, I love that song. Yeah. With, that's with the Michael Jackson. That's sample. on Satellite Flight. That's a verse from Kid Cudi on Satellite Flight. So Kanye didn't release it, so he gave it to... Oh, no, the verses. The verse not the track is itself. The verse from okay. Cudi and that people talk shit about mm-hmm. me. That whole thing, that came from Satellite Flight. Okay. Which is on Cudi's... That, that verse, that people talk shit about me, is a song on Satellite Flight. And that's the only song that's like... Good. And I'm going to look at all of you because I know you are going to say Speed and Bullet to Heaven is shit. Cool. It's not. I don't think it's shit. That's his experimental album. That's it's not even his experimental album. It's just I'm mentally ill and I'm going to make a rock album about mental illness. And it's just raw him. What's the, what's the name of the group that he created? The, the rock Wizard. Group? That Wizard. album's good too. Wizard's pretty good. It's low key. But, but also that album kind of sucks. They've got one good song on that album. But what you're saying though is that Brent Fias, that in his three albums, LPs, SoundCloud albums, are at the same level, that you can catapult him to a top five and put Cuddy as an honorable mention. Why does Brent Fias get the honorable mention? Right. He cut. Okay. He's so, gotta come up. All right. So if he's it, 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 he's been on the come up since 2017. Do a lot of people know of him? Yes. He's he's. Mainstream now. Now, now. We're just yeah, mainstream in the... Okay, today, he's mainstream because of his brand new album. But he's been on the come up for the past five years. Okay. And that's a long fucking time. It's 2022. He's been on the come up since 2017. But you, have, you don't even have loyalty to Cuddy. I do have loyalty. Even though, even though some more... Right. Look, there are movie directors that they have like one great film like yo i like this guy and then i see his other films like ah what happens to the magic like nicholas winding riffin the guy who directed drive he directed bronson yeah. he directed uh uh Valhalla, some shit like that that would be so no i think you're thinking the wrong one but he he made some other movies um oh man only uh, god forgives or some shit like that he the neon demon but like and okay, he this wants is, it like this is an art house this, movie this is your per- perception though all right um, Martin Scorsese. Martin Scorsese got misses. Martin Gangs of New York is a Gangs miss. Gangs of New York is a miss. Completely. Yeah, but he's also got... Okay, but when you... Ra- Dave Lewis. Like but that. when you but when you ratio Goodfellas, Wolf of Wall Street... Uh, I can't even think the of... The good Scorsese. outweighs the bad. Obviously. Exactly, but yes. that's with Cuddy. The good outweighs the bad, but with Cuddy, honestly, there's more bad than good. Oh... Like, I love Kid Cudi to death. I love Kid Cudi to death. Kid Cudi is one of the top artists of the generation. But... But not good enough to make your top five. (sighs) You're trying to make it seem like a bad guy. I'm not saying you're a bad guy. A top ten would be good, too. Like, he's number six. He's like, if Brent Fiaz didn't make the greatest R&B album of all time, he wouldn't be there. Wait, I'm sorry. What? Brent Fiaz made the greatest R&B album of all time? Listen to the album. He made the greatest R&B. B album yep. of all time. That was a bold statement. Well, you can't put Michael Jackson in that statement because he's the king of pop, right? Yeah, Michael Jackson never did R and B. Michael Jackson that. never did R and B. You can say that. That's he, fine. He did pop and pop and. You can say Prince never did R and B. You can say Prince, Prince was rock. rock. Prince was pop. Prince was pop rock. But there are R and B groups like New Edition. All together with all New Edition doesn't have one full album. That compares to Sombra Sun. I, I need to. I need. Look, you need to sit down and listen to this album. Movie. Look, fully through. Bobby Brown was a self-proclaimed king of R and B, but when you listen to his music, like Bobby Brown's pretty dip. Okay, pretty but dope. that's the thing. But does he have album. a full album where every song you can listen to without being like, eh, this one's the name? No, I, I wouldn't say that. I, I think his music's dated. Like, like he's got um my prerogative. He's got right, uh, yeah. 
Uh, don't be cruel. He's got yeah. like everybody's you know. to, like yeah, yeah. Like, like he's got the he's got the good ones. Uh, every little step I take, like he's got the hits, right. but it's like right. and he's then, not. He didn't drop a project that people look at and go, "That's that shit." Why, you like R and B? That's that shit. But R and B, you could also go back the sixties and seventies. You told me mm. Motown. Okay, okay, okay that's one. Rhythm and blues and traditional R and B are two different things. If you wanna, if you wanna put Brent Fias in the in the the, the traditional R and B category, it's different from rhythm and blues. Rhythm and blues is old school and how it progressed music. R and B is like the new stage of R and B. Like you got Jason Derulo, Usher, fucking Neo. Jason like, Derulo's pop. Jason, okay, he went pop R and B. Okay, maybe take out Jason Derulo, but Usher. Neo. I to say a lot of people say RB. Oh, if he's blood, he sings RB. That's it's not, not true. even that. That's yeah. not true. Like, like you might be even RB's a like you could sound. you can put 808s and heartbreak in RB. Heartless is an RB song. Yeah, eh. yeah. That's boy. That's a very gray area. Because yeah. Kanye is a known rapper, not an RB artist. But, but when he, he goes out of his comfort zone, R&B. yeah. He's influenced by R&B, and that was the, the, the album where he's like, I'm not rapping, I'm singing, I'm rap singing. Yeah. But I, I don't know if I was still consider that R&B. It's not R&B, but it's just like, it's, it's, they've got so many subgenres now, there's, there's so much weird shit, like, like, like scream rap, and, and emo rap, and, and, and sing-songy rap, and pop rock, and fucking hyper pop like I'm trying to there's so much of current shit. R&B artists alright Frank and Ocean would be R&B Frank Ocean's pop what? Frank Ocean's pop how's Frank Ocean pop? Frank Ocean is pop they don't even play his shit on the radio they play maybe one or two have songs. you heard Slide? yeah okay but still Frank's a, more R&B no Frank, Frank Ocean is not R&B Frank Ocean if you okay also R&B is also based off the style of the production too alright so would you consider Black Boom was R&B or Jazz? Black Puma is jazz. Really? Black Pumas is closer to being a jazz quartet than uh than a than an R and B group. Because Black Black Pumas is, is almost a rock band. What? Yeah. Black Pumas is like the the softest rock They're band. They're gonna flame you in the comments. No I, I hope so. <laughs> but if you're looking you. at me right now, go listen to Saunderson all the way through and then come back to this video. Like so alright, so like like a lot of people look at Look at um, like Lenny Kravitz. They're like, oh, he's rock, but well, I think he's R and B. Luther okay. Vandross was R and B. Luther Vandross. What, yo, dude, Johnny Gill. But was the, R&B. Johnny Gill. Okay, okay, Johnny Gill. And R&B. I know I'm going thirty years ago. Okay, okay. yeah. So I'm but trying you, to think. But you had that, but like, but like, this is the thing. Does Johnny Gill have a full album of R and B straight that is? Flawless and every song is listenable. But dude, nobody's got a perfect album. Those are few and far between. All right. Well, this is okay. Maybe it's just me with the connection to this album. Right. But it's like I, I don't know. Just you, on a standpoint, I've never heard anybody with a vocal performance that he has a a sound design and a production that that's just out of this world. What's of, the name of the album? Saunders- Saunderson. It. Just out of this world production, half acoustic, half fucking like R and B rappy, like like, and it's just like you're following his story, and and, and he's and he's talking about shit, and and, and you listen to it, and you're like, damn, some of that shit's happened to me. So I, like, I'll, I'll be honest with you, it's hard for me to put my finger on a current R and B artist, an authentic R and B artist today. Because nobody's making music like that. Nobody's using vocal. Brent Fias and is. If you telling you, mm-hmm. if you listen to this album, you that statement you just said. Nobody's making R and B music like this. Brent Fias is. You listen to that album, you will be like, "Holy shit! This is modern, true R and B." I got. I got to hear this album. I know you played in the car, but I'm not thinking. I'm thinking. Okay, it's it's decent music. I'm into it. It's, I like it's, it. Like, but for R&B, me. That whole album is just about him just being like and calling that the greatest R and B album. Of I whole I world. could hold that Yo. as the greatest R and B. Okay, but this is the thing. What are you? What album do people say is the greatest R and B album of all time? Like there's like people have say, oh, Mad Villainy is the greatest hip hop album of all time. My Beautiful Dark Twisted Fantasy is the greatest hip hop album of all time. To Pimp a Butterfly is the greatest hip hop album of all time. Uh, 
Good Kid, Mad City could be the, the greatest hip hop album of all time. Everybody's got different picks. But when somebody asks you what's the greatest R&B album of all time, you stutter. You you have to think. And, and like, you could just throw something out there that you like because, I don't know. Like, there's not much. The, the problem with R&B. Like, a true R&B fan would put a Neo album up there, an Usher album. Yeah. Like, like, like yeah. shit like that. And I, and I could be like, okay, fair enough. Yeah. But when you, like, if you really listen to Brett Fias, he's not, he's not talking to you like, Oh, I'm your man. We gonna do all this freaky shit like Usher is and Neo. Mm-hmm. Like, oh, oh, I'm gonna take you out. I'm gonna, I'm gonna sing softly and I'm gonna, I'm gonna, I'm the, I'm the ladies' man and shit like that. Brent Fires is the guy that 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 was left alone and fucked over by everybody, and he's just like he's pouring his heart out, but also being mm-hmm. like this toxic guy that just like has been through it all. And I'm not taking that away from you. He, he, he probably tells a story. He probably It's not even telling a story. It's just art like, from pain. I get it. And, and it's and he does it so perfectly. And the lyric not even the lyrics, like the lyrics you could take another side, like, oh anybody could have wrote this. But when you listen to what he's saying and the way he's saying it, and just like holy shit, like his like honestly, his voice is what does it for me. His voice and the way he he sings is just it. Like that Best song on the album. What? Best song on the album. Don't play it. But let me know so I can go check it out. Like if, if you like, like, I can't think. But like the iPod gets broken while you're listening to that album on one track. That shit's on a loop nonstop. But you don't get tired of it. What's it gonna be? Pick one song. First world problems. Nobody cares. First world problems. Yeah. Nobody. Okay. That's that song stuck. The fir- the first I somebody check out that song. Comments. Listen to that song. Tell me what you think. Give it again. What's the name of the time? First world problems slash nobody cares. All right, I'm gonna check that out. I'll see how I feel about that. I'm telling that. you, I heard. Okay, so I I was exploring because Anthony sent me an album by this UK guy, and now I love him. And that album that he sent me, mm-hmm. another flawless album that I love and I want to get on vinyl. What's the name? Loyal Carter. It's called Not. Oh, Wave. I've heard it. It's yeah, called yeah, Not yeah. Waving But Drowning. That, that album that is good. fucking flawless. Flawless, man. That album is so good. When did like, that come out? Two, three years ago. Okay. But this is like this is. So I, I followed this guy. Mm-hmm. He's pretty small, but not small. He's got a following, but not super small. But he's okay. big enough. And he's like, oh, I got this playlist. I Loyal just, Carter? Loyal What's Carter. That? Yeah, Loyal okay. Carter. He's got a play. He has his playlist on Apple Music. So I go look through his playlist, and I see the, the Brent Fires song. And I'm like, I know who Brent Fires is. Let's check it out. Let's see. He's got the song on his That's playlist. how you found him? He's got, that's not how I found Brent Fires. I knew who he was. Cause he's on a song called Crew with Gold Link that's fucking amazing and he kills the feature on. Um, yeah, he's got a bunch of good shit. But like, I saw that and I was like, holy shit. This guy's got this, this, this guy that I just found, who I think is great, has the same song that I love on the playlist. Now I need to listen to this whole album. And he made those suggestions? He had- Or Apple made the suggestions. So he had his- he oh he made a he playlist. made it's a playlist and that's for so, Apple. Okay, this is okay. like it's like you. it's I, like I, I, I Apple Music. Thing. This is Loyal Carter. I thought picks. this was Apple saying, "Hey, if you like this guy, no, check out this these is two. this is him this making is Apple Music Loyal Carter's picks. Okay, so he as an artist, that was, he was, said, that, was the, that was that was what I would say. that was the top song. Right. That was the song on the, the top of the list. Song, yeah, Lions. and I saw that I was like, I fucking love that song. So I was like, you know what? I'm gonna listen to this full album. The, the Loyal Carter album, and I'm like, alright. And I get into the Brent Fias album, and I, I only heard that one song, and I was like, holy shit, this is dope, I had it on repeat. Then I just, like, like over time, I just started listening to the album more and more, just, like, one song at a time, and I'd just fall in love with one song and replay it, replay it, replay it. And then, by the end of a couple months, I realized that I was replaying and loving every single song of that album. On that one album. That Sorry. one album. I like every now and then, like I'd listen to one song and be like, "Holy shit, this is banging!" I'd replay it five times a day. Then, like two, three days later, I'd come across another song from the same album, and I'd, "Holy shit, this is a banger!" And I did that so much that by the end of the time, I was like, I, I listened to the entire album, and every song has meaning and is great. So before that album, what was the album that was in that album's place before you discovered Saunders? What was the other album that you could say, holy shit, top to bottom, no skips, this is the one? R&B or anything? 
Just say anything in general. My beautiful dark twisted fantasy. Oh, obviously. To me, that's one of the greatest albums ever made. Could be the greatest album ever made. Look, I'm up there. Michael Jackson Thriller. Thriller's got skips. You're right. Thriller does have Thriller skips. has skips. Thriller has skips. So here's the funny thing. Thriller's got skips. Let me look at this. So hold up. Thriller has listen, I can shot I those the, the, the girl is mine. The girl is mine. Instant skip. Get the fuck off girl my Girl is mine skip. Baby be mine skip. Ba- yeah, be Lady in my life, skip. No, no, that's not that's that's not on Thriller. Yeah, it is. I'm, looking at, I'm the, looking at the Thriller that album. That must be a re-release. That is not the original Thriller okay. album. This is this is this is the, the, the keepers on Thriller. Wanna be star something? Obviously. Thriller. Beat it, Billy Jean, Human Nature, PYT. It's all classics. All classics. classics. All cult classics. That still hold up to this day. Yeah. Okay? But. But pop. it does have skips. Pop. If they got him with pop, pop genre. He's the king of pop. He's the king of pop. He's the king of pop. Okay. Okay. Don't do that because I can't monetize. You're going to flag me. <laughs> <laughs> all right. So, okay. But to me, when we talk about master masterpiece, look, even though it has skips, even though it has skips, okay? They all can't be 10 out of 10, okay? But but, but with Sondra's Son, every song is a fucking 10 out of 10. And there's inter... There's, there are songs on Sondra's Son that are a minute <laughs> and 30 second interludes of just him being him. Holy That's shit. That's Twisted Fantasy. Twisted yeah. Fantasy has the interludes to all the lights, which is just That's like... A, the interlude... Okay, but this is the thing. The interlude to all the lights is different than the interludes on Sondra's Son. The interludes on all the lights is... The piano and the just building up to the song. It's the build up. That's the build up to the huge all the lights. With Saunderson, it's a song will end and it'll cut, and then you'll start hearing like 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 a school bell will ring, and you'll hear people in a classroom, and then and you'll just hear you'll just hear chatter. You'll hear people chatting, 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 and it'll cut straight to an acoustic guitar, just him fucking pouring his heart into that fucking guitar. Do you know that as much as I love a beautiful dark twist of fantasy that I think is a masterpiece, probably, and to me the greatest hip hop album of all time, this was some song that skip on there? There's no skips on that album. There's, there's one skip on that album. What? And it's the one song that isn't even a song. Which one? Who Will Survive in America? Dude, I listen to that, I listen to that over listening to, uh... Do you know what that song is? What? Who's Around America? That that was a protest from the 60s. Yeah, yeah. That's the end of Lost in the World. Yeah. So when Lost in the World cuts, it'll right. cut and it goes straight into... But it still has who, the beat of Lost in the World. It's just... Underscoring. It's, it's, it's the beat of Lost in the World with that... The audio the, that protest. Of the protest. Right. It's a skip. Speech. That's a skip. I still there's no Kanye that. on it. I still, but I still but, okay, but if you want, but what's the sick. what's okay. the point of listening to that if you could just listen to okay. Lost in the World with Very Kanye? Right. On. To me, it's just an extended portion of of Lost yeah, in the World. Yeah, but it's but it but since it's its own song, it's a skip. Because you're not gonna put that song. You're not gonna put Who Will Survive in America on your playlist. No, exactly. No, you'll put Lost in the World on your right, playlist. Right. Right. Yeah. But okay. I can name every Fair song enough. on Fantasy, and it's a I skip Blame Game. Nah, fuck that. Blame the city. Nah, that. I'm walking out of this right now. I'm not, I'm not saying it's a bad song. <laughs> what I'm saying is, is, that, is that there's times. Is Devil in a Blue Dress on that one? Or Devil in a New Dress? Yes. Devil in a New Dress, right. Okay, I skipped that one too. That's a, okay. Fuck him up in the comments. No, please. Listen, fuck him please, up in the comments, is, is please. When I listen to Kanye, I'm listening to that certain vibe. I, I want to hear power. I want to hear all the lights. Okay, I, I want to hear. Okay, this is like, fantasy. We have two different runaway. Th- I'll listen to a million times. Okay, yeah. and then that one kind of throws. Listen, sometimes I'm not in the mood for Monster. Sometimes. Mo- okay, Monster is the only half skip I have on that album. Half skip because it's like, okay, this Jay Z verse fucking sucks. And it's so corny, they're just rapping about monsters and horror yeah, villains. But the thing that saves it is Nikki coming on there and killing Nikki that shit. shit. Nikki, N- Nikki should have gotten yes. a Grammy for just that verse. For just for that game. verse. <laughs> Best verse of the year, Grammy Mountain, Nicki Minaj. Monster. Uh-huh. But yo, no, 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 I'm going back to Blame Game. No, no. That, album, that song is fucking amazing. <laughs> yo, you're listening to Kanye, you're listening to John Legend say, bitch. And, and and calling this chick a bitch and a whore throughout singing. He's singing. He's like, I call you bitch for sure. Like, it's so good. <laughs> but then Kanye comes on and he's just telling the story. He's like, oh, I met this chick in the bathroom. We did this. We did that. Then she did. 
and shit like he's like, oh, you were an art student, but he was fucking with that shit. Oh, but your but your brother was doing cocaine. Like it's a crazy story, it but is. the beat is so good. It is, but sometimes it takes. Cause, all right, look, that beat. Okay, the beats on that album drive the entire thing. You and me like two different kinds of hip hop. All right, and we still love hip hop. You and like okay, wait, you I'm, like hip hop. I like that's anthems. triumphant. Yes, I you like anthems. you like corny Eminem. Well, time the fuck out. What are you calling corny Eminem? Corny Eminem. You're talking about mature 45-year-old Eminem. I'm talking about Eminem that looks like you right now with the hoodie up and the hood. <laughs> you know the slam in the bannigan? Fitting the ramekin with the same in the bannigan? <laughs> Why are you going and doing the bannigan and moving the bannigan? <laughs> like, <laughs> There's this guy. Yo, have you heard the, the, the song Homicide with Logic and then yeah. where Chris <laughs> <Christina? Yeah. laughs> That right there is, is what what drove me away from Eminem. <laughs> and what made me appreciate Slim Shady Dude, so much. I love I mean I, I used to hate Slim Shady. I think but now I think Slim Shady is Elvis of rap. No. Yes. No. And he literally does it. Because he's a white guy rapping, and he's, but he's, but he's he the greatest about it, rapper of all time. But he talks about it in his songs, and he flexes. Yeah, I said it. He flexes. Eminem is the greatest rapper of all time. Without question. Without question. I know. Go ahead. Argue. Argue. But it's true. He is. It's true. All cats. <laughs> all cats. Dude, greatest rapper of all time. MF2. Oh, listen, he's up there. I don't think he's better than Eminem. You, okay, this is the thing. When, when I play songs for you in the car, it's just, oh, is this one nice? Is this one knocking? You need to start listening to music by yourself so you can understand it. I need to listen to music by myself because I can pick what I want to hear instead of hearing you shit. No, that's okay, but this is the thing. If you're saying it's shit, you got no, I'm not saying it. it's shit. I'm saying I hear you saying shit all the time. Like, you never switch up your playlist. But, because I have a, okay, I do switch up my playlist. Every couple months, I take that playlist. I'll add all those songs to my top playlist because I have one. I have one playlist. It's called "I Heard You Want Immaculate Music Taste," and it's every song that I've ever added to a playlist. Can you share ever. that playlist? Yeah, I'll put it. In, I'll put it in the comments. Yeah, check, right. check the description. You'll, you'll do find that, that dope ass do playlist. That. You're gonna get that playlist. It's every song that I've ever thought was fire and ever put on a playlist. Okay. okay. Any song ever. Ev- How long is this fucking playlist? Let's look. Dude. I'm telling you, it's like a 49-hour playlist. Who's going to listen to a 49-hour playlist? You're not you're saying, already doing that. Like, all you have to do hours. is shuffle it, and you'll find heat. Okay. No, I get it. I get it. Hold up. So you're saying with a 49-hour playlist, you can shuffle it, and you'll you, probably never hear the same song again. Yeah, you won't hear if you sh- Okay, if you shuffle it, you won't hear the same song. That playlist is too long. When you shuffle, it plays... It doesn't play it in order. It plays every song in a random order, but it won't play the same song twice. Okay. This playlist... Is holy shit! I gotta scroll far. Oh, while you're scrolling, a thousand one hundred seventy-one songs, seventy hours. They like fuck that. I'm not. I'm not clicking. I'm not. Just g- g- put it on shuffle. Click. Put it on shuffle, and I'm telling click you, it. there is no skip on it. Go through it. No skip on it. Go I can go what you think doesn't belong on there. I can go through, and this Tell is and favorites. this is all genres. Every genre. I've got. Tell them to shut I've got them from shut down. Nas to Harry Styles to Metallica. To Alicia Keys, to the Far Side, to Common, Dude, that's your to XXX Shazam playlist. Shazam playlist. I'm I don't even saying. use Shazam. I'm just saying. I've got Shazam. the Undisputed Era theme song on here, bro. <laughs> <laughs> I yeah, got Fleetwood, Fleetwood Mac, Bad Bunny, Trippy Red, Thundercat, Madonna, Eminem, Red Hot Chili Peppers, Halsey, Brent Fiez, Kendrick Lamar, Lil Nas X, Black Eyed yeah. Peas, Alter Bridge. Brockhampton, Coldplay. Mm-hmm. I got a song with fucking John Cena on here. Is that good? It's that good. It's that good. It's that good. I got a John Cena song on here. And it's not even that one. I've got Bray Wyatt's theme song music. Yeah, dude. Bro. Like wrestling ring music. Doesn't Snow Leopard, count. Trina. It's as bad as Slim Zach Shady. Fox, Nardo Wick, Snoop Dogg, Future, Billy Joel. I can't Billy believe Billy Eilish. Like current Eminem. I can't believe you said that. I can't believe he's you rapping like about her. better shit now than he did back then when he started. He makes more sense now. He realizes how stupid he sounded back then, doing all those sound effects 
and the crazy shit and talking about raping girls and taking pills and doing drugs. And it's, but now he's just, his ex but now he's the political guy. No, he, he, it was one album. It was one album during an election. Yeah, but now everybody, everybody looks to Eminem to be the guy to say shit. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, but still. But, but, not, but like, he's the greatest if you listen to an rap Eminem, motivational speaker there is. It's, but if you listen to five Eminem verses from this year, I'm telling you, they will all sound the same. I don't know. Look, his, his cadence and his voice has gotten so repetitive since Kamikaze. It is fucking annoying. Maybe before that. But at the same time, no. Like revival was a cut, literally. and after revival, he just became this fucking corny veteran. There is no greater wordsmith in hip hop history than Eminem. I think you mean MF Doom. I don't think MF Doom can touch it, and he's good. Yo, I I, 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 I would like to see Eminem go toe to toe with Doom. Well, yeah. I, that's not gonna happen anytime soon. Yeah, never. But uh, <laughs> so yeah, so but, I could resurrect the ghost of yo, MF Doom, like. Doom, like, Eminem is that kind of rapper that when you listen to him, it's not even that you have to listen. It's that he's so fluent and he speaks so well that you hear everything he's saying. So when he says a punchline or he talks about something you know, it's like, oh, shit, oh, shit. But, like, MF Doom will find a word, then find the syllable for that word Mm -hmm. that has the, he'll find a word. Then take that word syllables and find the m- most syllables. Synonyms. Oh, thank you. I was, I was like, Synonyms. Okay, I was, uh, and That's he'll find the word with the most syllables and then rhyme it. Okay. So let me ask you a question. Like, if you listen to MF Doom, because MF Doom is a great rapper, but I think what hooks me into MF Doom are the beats that he raps on. But the, the beats are That's what you're missing from MF Doom, though. MF Doom is a fucking killer producer. Dude, you gotta listen to, to uh, and I know I'm always trying to put you on to them, and you're always brushing them off, but the Demi guys with self titled? Dude, self titled is nasty. I think he challenges MF Doom. Self titled is money. <laughs> Yo, this dude just said an indie guy from Connecticut is better than MF Doom. <laughs> Wait, self titled? Dude, you gotta listen to self titled's work. Self titled is nasty. You're talking about the guy with, with fucking apathy? Dude, apathy's nasty. With self titled. <laughs> apathy is just Eminem different. on a low budget. And don't tell me I'm not wrong. If Eminem was okay. from Connecticut yeah. and had yeah. no no push. Yeah. But dude, they, they got a lot of good shit. Between Apathy Self-Titled, The Demigods, Army of the Pharaohs, Jedi Mind Tricks. Um, dude, all, they got okay, a lot all of, of good them, shit. All of them and all of their albums could not compare to Mad Villainy. Mad Villainy itself wipes every hip-hop album on the face of the earth. Every hip hop album. Every uh, the two exceptions I would give would be Fantasy mm-hmm. and Damn by Kendrick Lamar. Two exceptions. Damn. Damn. I personally love that album, and Duckworth is the greatest beat of all time. Duck Duckworth is nice. I don't know if it's the greatest beat of all time. Duckworth. Is I, nice. I hear that beat and I, I fucking feel inspired. I just got into Kendrick, and not even heavy though. But like I, I, me too. I like random Kendrick songs, right? Once you listen to Kendrick fully, you'll understand and be like, "Holy shit, the, I've been missing out this entire fucking the time." The last album, I don't even know the name of it. Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers. That one was an experience. Like I don't, every album is like that. I so I didn't go into that album expect. You showed me the video that first came out when he was changing faces. Yeah, the heart part five. That fucking song was amazing, dude. So I saw that. I was like, oh, very interesting. Let me go check out this album. So I was cleaning the house one day, and I put it in, and I got lost in this poetic Kendrick Lamar is Black Eminem. That's the album that should have won the Pulitzer Prize. The stories he told on this. But, this is the thing. If you think that's fucking good, you need to listen to Pimp a Butterfly. Because to Pimp a Butterfly... I I personally don't think to Pimp a Butterfly is the greatest rap album. I don't think it's the best work of Kendrick Lamar. But on everybody else's standpoint, and when I've heard it, like, the shit he talks about, like, if you think I, I Mr. Morale and the Big Steppers is, is him talking about what's been happening. COVID, transgenders, mm-hmm. fucking daddy issues with men. Yeah, like, yeah. like, just... Bad relationships. Just, shit, like, yeah. yeah, shitty relationships, toxic relationships. Just, that's, that's him talking yeah, about... like slam poetry. That's it, yeah, slam poetry yeah. rap about the now. To Pippa Butterfly is like if Martin Luther King 
could rap. Really? The, the, you, I, that may be a stretch, but some <laughs> people could be the highest. <laughs> like, right, but literally, if Martin, Luther, if, Mar- if Martin Luther King wrote a rap album, it'd be To Pimp a Butterfly. That's what he got the Pulitzer for? Yeah. Or the, the Nobel Prize. No, it's the uh, Nobel. I'm telling you, you want to. I'm s- telling you, it's Nobel. Google it. All I'm saying about Kendrick is that what I heard of Kendrick was the stuff that they would play like in a movie trailer, what would make the radio. And I'm like, oh, I like that song. Let me go hear the album. Pulitzer. Yeah. Pulitzer. Thought, That's what I thought. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, and, and, and you would listen to it, and they're like, oh, I want to hear more songs that sound like that. And then you don't get it. And I'm like, what is this? But that's okay, but you got he's, on, it's, I feel like he's just talking. Hey, Kendrick? Kendrick? Kendrick, right? On the new album? No, no, no. I'm talking about these old albums. So I would hear a single, and I would be like, oh, that's good. Let me go check out the album. And I'm like, oh, I'm not feeling this album at all. His old stuff is very Kendrick. You, okay. Like, the I, I got to reverse the engineer my experience with you. Like, okay, this is the last album. I did it this way. You got to start with the new shit that's more mainstream to be like, okay, I understand Kendrick. Now that I understand how his brain works and the way he raps and what he wants to put in a song and like what he, what he feels the need to talk about and say, that's when you go listen to an album about like Pimp a Butterfly because you're you're looking for some you're looking for what he's saying in every song. That's you're missing. looking for for the for the the. I didn't connect with what he was saying until this album. And now I want to go yeah. back and hear what he's talking about on other albums. Now I got him. I'd say Mr. Morales the is the the best one for that. Really? Okay. Cause it's the most it's 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 the most social commentary. That's like, yo, we're gonna talk yeah, about this yeah, shit right. throughout the entire no, album. I'm not putting that album on to Bob to it like, oh that's I do it. though. You do. I do. See to me. No, okay, I, that's the that's the that's the great thing about that album. Okay. The fact that he can make banger songs that would be on the radio. But when you really listen to the song, he's he's talking about yeah, shit yeah. that, like, what? Well, I, I was going through a poetic, like, lyrical journey on that album, like, and I got I literally got lost in that album. Yeah, that's how that album works. But like the way the 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 producing is, it it makes it feel bouncy. It makes it feel oh, this is upbeat. This is happy. This is right, this right. is has, this has, you this has life. You can here. listen to this. Mm-hmm. But when he's speaking and rapping, it's it's. This is happening. That's happening. My fucking uh, my, uh, my uncle is a lady now. Like, uh, uh, dude, like, what a great like, song. A, like father time. Wow. Like, like, what like fuck song. the girls. Dudes have daddy issues too. Yeah. Like, bro. But the beat on that song is so good, and the Sampha uh, uh, chorus is so good. Yeah, dude. Like, it's such a great. And dude, it's not getting any love. No, yes it is. Is it? That album's gonna win. Really? That album is gonna win the Grammy. It deserves it, man. That I, see, I still hear people talking about. There's no. The, I, I, I know when to drop people like, ugh, like, Andrew Kendrick. Mm. Right now, I can't think of a rap album that's gonna beat that for the Grammy this year. Like, call me if you got lost one last year, and I definitely saw that. Donda falls on this year though, right? No, Donda was last year. Really? And, and call me if you got lost beat Donda. Tyler's album. Yep, because it was a fucking classic. That album was a fucking classic. Another ten out of ten flawless album, and if yo that album is if Tyler took you on a fucking journey to different places in the world, and you're going on a fucking excursion, and he's just rapping and just doing it, and 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 he's rapping about yo, I've got more fucking drive than you. My motivation is this: I like fucking Rolls Royces with bird ceilings, and I wear cardigans and short shorts and long That's socks. Weird, like, but, but I he owns, but he artist. owns it, and, I love and he that. fucking doesn't That's give why I shit. Respect him because he's an artist. He's, he's so like, how I express myself. He's like this is how I but his myself. music sometimes like mm. no, 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 never. You because. <laughs> His beat selection, his production style. Yeah. What the He's way? Got some misses, the though. way? No. So, so Call Me Bit Lost, I would say has that's his best album so far. One mi- He's got three. Like no, he's got for me five amazing albums. He's got so Bastard, Goblin, Wolf, Cherry Bomb, Flower Boy. Igor, call me if you get lost. That's seven albums of of pure perfection. You're saying no, not not all together. So okay. seven. He's got seven albums. 
Goblin uh, isn't flawless. It's cool and it's and it's weird. It's very slim shady vibes. I think I know that one. Yeah. It's very slim shady. That's the that's the video where he ate the roach and shit mm. like that. It's good, but it's not ten out of ten flawless. This could win a Grammy. Cherry bomb, very experimental. Not really Grammy vibes. Yeah, I don't know that one. Bastard is Goblin before Goblin, but it's 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 so gritty and raw, and it's just. Tyler uncut being that black slim shady character and just like just tearing it up and and not many people get it but it's good and I personally love it and I think it's a 10 but Flower Boy Igor Call Me If You Get Lost and I put Wolf there because Wolf is a is a classic is a 2013 then that album dropped that shit was a fucking classic if, if you could only have one Tyler album which one would it be? I think I'm taking home if you get lost. <laughs> really? But is it because that's, that's the, the freshest one in your head? No. The reason? Like, I could go back and listen to Igor. Igor, say, Igor is a flawless fucking album. And that could be another <laughs> R&B slash soul album. That ain't no R&B album. You didn't listen to the album. I've heard the album. I don't think so. That album is... Yo, this is, this is what he does. When he dropped, so he dropped an album, he was like, and he dropped Flower Boy, and people were like, oh, this is soft shit, like, we, we, get, we get you can rap over the soft shit, but like, can he sing? So he drops a fucking singing album, he drops a full R&B, pop, slash hip-hop album, mm-hmm. mostly R&B, and, and pop, fucking wins a Grammy, it's great. Does then people win, are like, does he win a Grammy for best hip hop album or best R and B album? They put him in, uh, ah! they put him in urban category, and he said that at the Grammys, and he was like, "Yo, y'all are racist as fuck for that shit." Wait, he said it was, that it was best urban album. I don't know if it was, it was like best urban contemporary or something like that. Okay. And he and he was and he said something like he was holding the Grammy and at like like they did like a little media thing yeah. after and he said he was like, I don't know why when hip hop artists try to do different things, they get immediately put in the urban category. You went see him punk on the media screen. Yeah, basically. Okay. But like lighter. He didn't go crazy. <laughs> he he, he was just like he was like, I think it's a little racist that, that people put that in the urban category just because it's different. Mm. Just because it's different from being hip hop. And then people were like, Oh, he can't rap. So he drops an entire fucking rap gangster grills mixtape. And that's Call Me If You Get Lost. Oh. Call Me If You Get Lost is like if you went on a fucking cruise to fucking Switzerland and DJ Drama, who did the Lil Wayne albums and the Pharrell albums and the, the gangster shit from 2000s, produced this fucking adventure. Hmm. I'm telling you, Saunderson, Call Me If You Get Lost, you need to listen to those two all the way through. You you would like Call Me If You Get Lost, because it's just like, it's so fun, it's so out there. I'm sure, you're always in the car with me, so I'm sure I've heard that one. You definitely have. Like, like, that album is just perfection. Hmm. That album is Tyler the Creator at perfection. I'll question them both. Saunderson, Call Me If You Get Lost. Those are your two recommendations now. Tyler the Creator, Call Me If You Get Lost. Brent Fires, Saunderson, report to us in the comments. I want to hear about it. Don't forget to subscribe. Um, hit that motherfucking like button too. Yeah, hit the hit the with all that shit. Hit it. It's free. Abuse that it's like button. Free. Degrade what that like button. For? Hit that fucking. See this like button. Do it now. Hit the fucking button. What are we talking, dude? Beat the shit out of that like button. Yo, what are you waiting for? Like, bro, you need help. We're sitting here talking shit. It's you can just fingers. you can just turn us off real quick, go down there, like it, and then Dude. come back up, and we'll be back talking. Like, what are you doing, bro? You want to like the video? Like it? Come on! Write some shit. Like, some tell us how to subscribe. What is wrong with you? Like, it's free. Don't go to the You see these guys? What the fuck are you waiting for? What the fucking video? Oh, anyway. Yo, it's funny. I, I'm looking at Bound Two up there with Kanye. And obviously yeah. Seth Rogen and James Franco. <laughs> <laughs> that too. But yo, 98 million views. Yo. Yeah. I want those numbers. Hit that fucking. Tell your Get friend. Get that motherfucking numbers. I don't care if you. Yo, have- yo, anybody on the Kanye 98 million view page, come here now. Argue with us. You're like, I'm talking. I don't care if you don't like. Say no. whatever you want about my shorts. Yo, we I should do care. radio I'm shit and have people dope. call in. That'd be oh, so funny. Dude, I love That'd that. That'd be great. That, so I could just hang up on oh, my dad. Like, 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 yo, yo, call in, give us some questions. All right, shut up, goodbye. Bye. 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 <laughs> we got Bob from the OKC. OKC don't know hip-hop. Click, next. <laughs>
Give me big cities only. That's it. Fuck out of here. Fuck again. you talk. <laughs> What's Frank Ocean featuring Brad Pitt? Oh, okay. So I'll, I'll explain you this. So Frank Ocean at the fest, he's doing a song called Close to You, and Brad Pitt really liked the song, so he came out, and what Brad Pitt's doing there is he's reenacting the moment that Angelina Jolie told him she was done with him. <laughs> yeah. I'm telling you. I'm telling you. That video. Wait a minute. Is that some, was he there live? He's the, okay, so Frank Ocean's singing, doing his thing, and Brad Pitt's on the side of the stage just. Like, he's there. He's at, yeah, okay. he's there. That's him there. That video of Brad oh, Pitt on the screen shit. is him there on the side of the stage, and he's sitting there reenacting the phone call of him with Angelina Jolie because the song is so fucking sad. Oh my god. And What's the song? Close to you. Close to you. And it's really not that, like, I love that song. It's a Stevie Wonder sample, and it's really good. Oh, but it's very, like, techno Frank Ocean. Okay. But it's just, like, it's just, mm. So, like, I was Brad there. went to a concert. Brad was Frank there, Ocean and concert. he reenacted the moment that Angelina Jolie oh, was on the phone with him. Yeah. 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 It was, yeah. Shout out to I, Frank Ocean. I found that out yeah. yeah. That's awesome, dude. Yeah. Um, here's another one up there. Again, it's just so because it's not on, on camera, we, we have the TV on, but so we can monetize this shit, and so I don't get flagged with copyrights. I'm just looking at we had YouTube up. Brockhampton, where are they had on your list? <sighs> they're top ten. They're, they could. Be, they're seven. Seven. They're they're, they're of all seven. time. They're seven. Of all time. They're seven. Okay. Why? Cause they they might be the greatest boy band of all time. The greatest boy band. Oh, yeah, oh, dude, I listen to that. Okay, yeah. that. Okay. Like they could be the greatest boy band of all time, and they are the bridge between the Backstreet Boys and Wu Tang Clan. I I know I know he's called the Wu Tang Clan a fucking boy band. <laughs> yeah, no, yes, I did. No, 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 dude. I'm telling you, Shaolin, don't run up in here with the fucking swords right now. I'm telling you, I'm telling you, Yo, protect your neck. <laughs> they come for you. <laughs> if you mix, if you mix the Backstreet Boys and NSYNC with Wu Tang Clan, you get Brockhampton. If they're that good, why'd they break up? There's too many of them, right? All bands break up. Yeah, that, that was their yeah, thing. Did. All bands but break how up. how long were they out for them to break up? They've like, been out since 2013. Okay, all right, that makes sense. Yeah. They dropped three albums in one summer. They look like they're very uh, diverse with their group. Oh, yeah. That's like, they right. came out with these with these, um, with these these vests one year. Like, you see how they had the vest? One yeah. of them had a vest that said, like, 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 like I'm addicted to something. One of them said I'm a fag on the back of it because like oh. like they just all had shit. Like one of them was like like see see see. Oh yeah 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 yeah, yeah. Okay. yeah. Like fiend. Like they all had certain well, they're shit. Putting, like derogatory. Oh, they're putting messages on. They're there. putting like see. Wow. Yeah, like yeah. like because yeah. that's their their symbol of 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 because they're all like they're diverse. They're some of them are gay. Some of them are black. Some of them are this. Which is very diverse. It's, it's, that's, it, that's like, good. And it's diverse music wise because there's dudes who have fucking amazing vocal performances. Then there's dudes who have great raps. Then there's dudes who have production like like Brockhampton is amazing. I gotta check this out if you're watching it's a video it's Brockhampton Bleach Live at the Novo Randall Vale put that one up 425,000 views I like that good for you guy um, but I want to check Bleach that out. Bleach is a good song too. Oh that's the Loyal Carter song right there I love that song Ooh. that song is amazing Loyal Carter that's the guy I was just telling you about the guy that Anthony put you on yeah too? up right there right there that fucking song what the <laughs> name of that I don't know what it's called, but that song was like Otto Lange. Otto Lange or something Otto Lange? like that. That song stuck with me. Why? It's just the chorus. Like, it's so simple, such a soft song. And then I don't know who that dude Jordan Raque is, but he comes on the song and he just. I'm hoping it's not the Georgia Smith we know. <laughs> oh, no. No, 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 no. no, that's a, Actually, Brett Fires does music with Georgia Smith. <laughs> not the one we know. No. <laughs> <laughs> Fuck you, Georgia. Oh, uh, yeah. <laughs> Fucking ghost. Anyway. Uh. <laughs> yeah. But that song, um, like, I'm not huge on the verses because he's talking about some weird shit and talking about, like, like a little story. But, like, that fucking chorus hit me and I'm just, yo, it's so soulful. It's so, it, it's just beautiful. Whoever that guy Jordan Raque is, Hold on. give him. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to get three seconds so I can give you. You know what? Hate the bus. Never get enough. Oh, right there, right there. That okay. guy. That guy. That comes up right there. Yeah, I know this song. You played this a million yeah, times. That song is so good. Like, sleeper album this year that could face up. This one right here. 
Boom. This. You will leave a fingerprint on my TV. I hope you know Fingerprints on your TV, my ass. That album right there, Black Thought and Danger Mouse, goes oh, in the shit yes. right now. Dude, that fucking album is dope. That album is a fucking banger. I thought this was a, a Black Thought solo project. It's, it is a Black it Thought. Is. It's a Black Thought solo, solo project. project but fully a collab pro- with somebody. It's, it's a Black okay. Thought solo project fully produced by Danger Mouse. Danger Mouse is a producer. Yeah, okay, okay. Dude, that, that's a good album. Yeah. That's a really MF Doom has a whole album with Danger Mouse. How's G.I.D.'s new album? Any good? Fucking amazing! That could be another Grammy contender. Get out. Yep. Dude, you you, you give everybody Grammys. Ah, uh, not true. No? There's no... There's a, J.I.D., Black Thought, and Kendrick Lamar have three albums that I think could be Grammy, Grammy nominated this year. This is your YouTube channel. Yeah, this is my YouTube. Not that channel, but this is your... your... My YouTube page, yeah. Okay, yeah. Go and this like is like it. the one I do all the most music shit on. Okay. So like, look, like, these are videos of MF Doom and shit like that. All right. Where I throw the Jew down the well. Where's that on your list? Number <laughs> <laughs> one. Number one. Throw the Jew down the well. Like, like, like Eminem on that Use free. This Gospel. Tell me that verse on Use This Gospel doesn't sound like anything he's put out in the past. It's not that good. It's not good. It's not good. Because it sounds like everything he's put out in the past yeah. year. Yeah. I, I feel like he didn't have control of that. Oh, Is he? What? So, okay, never mind. That's the song. Okay, I'll see if they had a different song. Um, yeah. I don't know. I like, like I yo, know. like, there's some shit. Rhymes like dimes is a great song. Rhymes like dimes is so good. Yeah, good <laughs> song, <laughs> man. Dude, I'm telling you. <laughs> okay, Look, you know your music. I, I just think it was a, it was a bold statement to knock Kid Cudi out of your top five. And replace him with Brent Fires. Kid Cudi's not consistent. Brent Fires is always vocally consistent. Mm. And most of the time producing consistent. Because he, he doesn't really have... Like, the songs that are misses are misses. But the songs that are hits are fucking hits. Damn, you you passionate about those like, hits. hits. Okay. Like, right. like, when he makes a good song, it's a really good fucking song. Does it but when hit? he makes a... Or does it- Hit. That shit hits harder than Mike Tyson with no glove. Yo. Like Mitch Green's eye? Yeah, exactly, exactly. <laughs> right there. Like CM Punk in fucking Cleveland. Shout out CM Punk. Fuck CM Punk. Wow. Coca Oh, actually, hey, I forgot to mention his name. Dominic Fike is in my top five right now. <laughs> right there. I forgot hold to mention. Hold on, wait, wait, wait. I forgot to okay. mention his name. Dominic yeah. Fike is in my top five. You are completely all right, all right. ruining Kanye, the concept of Kanye, top five. Kanye, Tyler, Frank, Brent Fayez, MF Doom. Uh, no. Dominic Fike, MF Doom, Brent Fayez. All right, but what I'm. Uh, so. Right now, you give me your top five of right now. I'm talking about your top five of all time. Your favorite. Kanye, Tyler, Frank, MF Doom, Dominic Fike. Dominic Fike makes your all time list. Tell, tell me. I, I mean, I know he's the, the kid from your four. It's not even that. Like, like, listen, he's got really good music. Yo, he's talented. Yo, like I don't know. But top five. I connect with him. I don't know. When I see him, I see myself, which I get. I get. And it's just like, like he has that perfect bridge between the soft Chili Peppers rock with that yeah. slappy boom bap rap, that, and it blends so perfectly. It's still not R&B, though. It's not R&B. It's, no. It's rock. It's rock? You would it's, say rock? It's, it's pop like, rock. Like pop, pop rock. Pop rock. Okay. I'd say pop rock. Because his, his voice on the, on, the, on the rock songs is mm-hmm. very, very teen poppy. Yeah, but it's, yeah. But it's good. I love. I like him on acoustic. I love. Yeah, he's he's great on acoustic too. He's great acoustic. Because he doesn't need all the gimmicks, man. He's he's naturally gifted. He's so fucking. That's somebody I found this year, and I was like, holy shit, that's that. When did you you find him after watching the the episode? When when we were remember we went to Disney. Yeah. And we watched the first episode of Euphoria in the hotel room. I saw him. I was like, oh, that guy. I heard his name before because he was on a few slow tie songs. A a song called um, Terms. Okay. That he's on, he does the chorus on it, uh-huh. and and I knew I knew his name, but I never really looked at, I never listened to him. And then he was like, "Oh, that's that guy Dominic Fike on on Euphoria." And I was like, "Oh, he looks cool. He looks like somebody I'd be friends with, <laughs> or, or somebody I'd want to be." And then I was like, hmm. I, and then I and then I, and then I listened to it, and then I was like, "All right, let's check out his song. 
let's let's check out his let's check out his song. He's my top five because he would be my my in my top five but friend. But it's not even that. Cool. But that's not even that. It's that I saw him and I was like, hmm. Oh, you got a nice voice. You sing? Can you play me something? <laughs> <laughs> Just say if you're friends with Dominic Frank, like what? Nah, I'd be like, like, yo, let's, yo, let's make me. Let's make me. Let's make me. Right. <laughs> You would be like, sing to me. I'm listening. Hell, yes. I would do that to burn. I would do that. Yo, I would do that to burn fire. You would write Ocean. Frank Ocean. I would sit there and be like, bro, just sing to me. Just sing to me. I will sit. Here. You can sing for as long as you want. I will sit here and listen. That's like me saying that I would pay to watch Denzel Washington read a phone book. Yeah, like, like if you like, if you if you could sit and watch Denzel Washington do do like acting rehearsals or 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 do or do like if you could watch. Denzel watched him do a one man show, just sitting there watching him, and it's just you and him, dude. Yeah, if I could sit here and just listen to Frank Ocean sing and just just one on one, like yo, I would be so do fucking you, amazing. You know where I watch every, every like every couple of months is the the uh, Denzel Washington commencement speech that he gave. Yeah, with with the, the, the uh, fall, fall forward. Fall forward yeah. Oh my god, dude! I watch it, and it's long. It's long, yeah. but dude, he gets so deep in his stuff. I love Denzel, man. Like I said, I would pay to watch him read the phone book. Yep. Like like uh, like I would I would pay for Frank Ocean to sing straight to my face. Just like I like he like he could go in the next room and I'd just sit there and watch and just serenade. Yeah. Like <laughs> Like that Yo, though. you know what's cool? Not to sidetrack it though, but the fact that I got to talk to Denzel Washington during a press junket and we were doing it for the Bone Collector. That's where another story comes in that I promise you guys. And if you watch the Midnight Hustle podcast, the Angelina Jolie one. Shh. <laughs> <laughs> oh shit! You got hey, wait. Where is it? Hey, <laughs> you gotta beg for that one. Yeah, you gotta beg for that. Yeah, story. yo, fifteen hundred <laughs> likes and you'll get that video. <laughs> so, um, so we were doing the Bone Collector press junkie. Yeah, go ahead. I hope you're wiping my sofa off with my pretty leg. <laughs> We're doing the Bone Collector press junket, and we're sitting at the round table, and I'm I'm like in the first seat next to wherever the the actor was sitting during the junket, and he comes in and do my heart pop 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 pop, and everybody's like, wait, but okay, but what Denzel was this like? Like, what movies was he coming off of that you looked at and you're like, holy shit, that's Denzel? Fucking oh man, he, um, he hadn't even done training day. Did yet. he do the 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 Frank Lucas movie? No, that was that was way later. Uh, that was bad. that was way after Training Day. I don't even know what movies he done. Oh like, my god, way back like that. Look, I, I was a big Crimson Tide fan. Love that movie. That um, Fallen. I mean, dude, I mean, just Denzel has a swagger to him that that is un, undeniable. Yeah. So I, I I just love his his presence on the screen. No, no, I that movie fucking Roman J Israel Esquire. Oh, shit, fuck. So, listen, bro, listen, I love Denzel. He got some shitty that movies. Was the shit. Roman J Israel is terrible. Um, the preacher's wife is terrible. Um, the Manchurian Candidate. Fucking. I heard hard. that movie is. I want um, to check that one out. I heard the Frank Sinatra one is much better. Frank Sinatra played that. Yeah, role okay, that's what I was saying earlier. Yeah, okay, yeah, yeah. The, the the new one that uh, I think Jonathan Demme, the guy who directed Silence of the Lambs, did yeah. that movie. Fucking sucks, man. Yeah. And it's crazy. You would think Denzel Washington and Meryl Streep, right? Yeah. Like fuck, that's a banger. Right? They leave Shriver's in it too. Ooh, that was Sabretooth? Sucked. Sabretooth, yeah. yeah. Uh, Ray Donovan. Yeah. Um, I never checked out that show. Oh, dude, that show's great. You love it. Yeah. You love Ray Donovan. But so I'm so I'm sitting there. Denzel, he comes in. We're doing The Bone Collector. And I was just doing my research. Because I, I already knew what Denzel was working on and stuff like that. And everybody's like, so Denzel, tell us your motivation for, paying, for playing a paraplegic. Where he's basically paralyzed from the neck yeah. down. He's in bed yeah. and moving shit with a straw. Um, so that's in the entire movie? The whole movie. <laughs> the beginning of the movie, he's a cop, and he goes in to do some detective work, and this fucking, something like a beam from a construction site falls on his head. Breaks his neck. Breaks his neck, and that's it. He's paralyzed the whole movie. <laughs> and he wants to kill himself, and they're like, dude, you got the best brain on the NYPD. We need you to solve this this <laughs> case. So Angelina Jolie is the cop on the beat. Queen Latifah is his, is his uh, caregiver, and they're bringing him documents and shit like that. He's like... <laughs> Yeah, that's the guy there. So, like, you don't get no Denzel shit. Should've, like, he's put Denzel on upgrade. He, no, he he's just put Denzel on upgrade. <laughs> you see Denzel come. <laughs> Yo, imagine Denzel paraplegic and upgrade. They put the little thing in his back and he just. <laughs> I'm, I'm like, Yo, at some point, you gotta get the straw to slap the coffee cup out of there. Like, hey, I don't give a damn. Wait. That was Frank Lucas. So he's playing Mr. Glass. 
Yo, Mr. Glass can move and break himself again. Yeah. And Denzel was fucked up in that movie. But so anyway, so I'm sitting there with him, right? People just asking him generic questions. And before he got there, the other reporters were saying, I wonder what Denzel we're gonna get today. Because apparently they this is my first and only time. They've done shit with him. But they had done shit with him. Yeah. And sometimes he he acts a little arrogant, a little cocky, right? That's everybody. Yeah, but it's sometimes, you know, sometimes Denzel's just not in the fucking mood. Yes. And and and, and, and I, some people ask some weak questions. I'm not, I, I, if I got the same weak questions every time, I went to a fucking thing, I'd be like, "Are you serious?" This is another question come on. over and over again. You're like, "Oh, it was great work." Yeah, oh my God. Yeah, this movie so great. great. Oh, I loved being on the set. Like, so I got two questions in. Nothing to do with Bone Collector. First one was about a movie that he did with Bruce Willis called The Siege. Which like almost predicted nine eleven. Yeah, it was crazy. They they bombed. He's he's an FBI agent. They were bombing New York. These Arabs were bombing New York, and he's trying to stop the bombs from going off. And then the military police have to come in, and they they go around door to door, taking Muslims and putting them in cages in New York City Why? because every they because they can't. They can, like, yeah. like what they would do in World War Two when they would go around after after you know we went to war with yeah, Japan, sort of in, 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 in camps, in not camps, camps, but like, right. like like but it's like, like that. jails, like yeah, like, right, prison, it's like, not even war jails, jails. right, war jails. jails, yeah. So he's doing that, and I was like, dude, you know, I said, I, I said, I don't know if anybody ever asked you these questions about, you know, but but some of your roles that you've done has just gone like under the radar, like the siege, dude. I love that fucking movie. That's probably one that and Crimson Tide are probably the ones that made me this huge Denzel fan. And um, he was like, nobody ever talks to me about that. And you know that movie did a lot of business stuff. And dude, dude leaned in, he said, fuck these other reporters, yo, that movie. And he starts talking about the movie, and then he's got to get back to the other. I would, I would, I would have, yo. So it comes around again, right? That you're speaking to right, <laughs> dude. I'm, I'm, I'm mesmerized. Then he starts fucking going around the table. Yo, that's the look I got when Sam Raimi looked at me. Oh wait, <laughs> yo, yeah. when Sam, Raimi, yo, we're in we're Tony Todd. Sam Raimi walks in the room, and I go, "Oh, okay, well. <laughs> we're interviewing Tony Todd, a spooky empire." Right, and this this was before while well, they were filming Kenny, uh, right Jordan before Peele's Kenny, Kenny, right Man, before right? that, and, and I'm talking to him. Um, with, with uh, the other Georgia Smith <laughs> and uh, and Nico was my camera guy that day, and Sam Raimi was there. They had brought him and Bruce Campbell in to do like some oh, yeah, dead that sightings, right? Yeah, they were yeah, over yeah, there, yeah. and Sam Raimi comes to the room. And he's he just like, walks in the room. I'm holding the camera. Like, what's going like, on, guys? I'm what, like, where's the coffee and donuts? <laughs> <laughs> and, and Nico's like, I'm just uh, like Sam, Sam Raimi. He's like, I got Tony Thomas, Sam Raimi, and Sam Raimi. <laughs> <laughs> so I'm sitting around the table, and. They ask the questions, right? But they, they go back to Bone Collector. They're like, we're here to talk Bone Collector. Nothing, not these other Because they're reporters for certain shit. Yeah, they are. But, you know, every, every time you watch, like, a press show or something, they always say, hey, how's your love life? Hey, what, what do you do with your kids this summer? And that's what they put on entertainment. Like, first, I don't give a fuck. What? So, yeah. I'm like, this is the one only time that I get to say, ask two questions about anything I want. But I was just like, all right, I can fan my way out, or I can make this very, hey, I'm ahead of the game. Yeah. So my next question, because I only got two questions, the whole thing. You go around the table twice, and and when it came back to me, I was like, "Hey, they all ask you about Bone Collector. What can you tell me about the Hurricane? The Hurricane was the movie he made about Reuben Hurricane Carter, the black boxer who had beat it from New Jersey, who had beef with with one of the police detectives in New Jersey, and got framed for a murder he didn't commit. What? And spent time in jail. Some white people from Canada fought to get him out after a black boy they took in, like in a, in a summer camp, living yeah. with the white people in Canada kind of deal. And he picked up Ruben Carter's book. He read it. He was like, yo, we got to get this guy out of jail. We got to yeah. fight for him. And, um, and Denzel looked at me. He says, how do you know about the hurricane? And he got here and said, let me tell I learned that I love to fight, and he's telling me about Hoover. <laughs> Yo, again, fuck those reporters. Let's talk about the hurricane. Dude, one of the greatest moments of my life. I fucking love yeah. that shit. I, if, if Denzel leaned in and said, yeah, I would have just. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, the funny thing is, like, so th th this is story. Angelina Jolie's in that movie, too. There's another story uh, <laughs> that we would talk about another time, but. After Angel Angelina, uh, Denzel was the main event, so Angelina came in before him. And when she left, one of the reporters pulled out because they gave us like like a press uh, folder that had a breakdown of the movie 
and it had the pictures the, that yeah the glossy yeah, eight yeah, by yeah. tens that you would put in the newspaper to scan them for, for your reports and stuff like that right so the dude pulled it out and he got an uh, autograph from angelina jolie and i was like you're not supposed to do that wouldn't it because you're never supposed to take this was before cell phones this was like in 99 so you're not supposed to take pictures with the stars you're not supposed to ask for autographs right but the dude was like oh can you sign this miss jolie she, she signed off and i'm like dude i knew this was the one only Are time signed? Uh, that one signed by Denzel. <laughs> yeah. What? That, so I, I was like, dude, I was like, they can kick me out. I just met Denzel Washington. I just had two questions with him face to face because I'm that seat right there. I said, like, I'm getting his fucking autograph. Dude, got that thing. Spit on my yo, wall. Yo, when you're dedicated, it's dedicated to yo, something. It's been on yo, my the wall. Ric Flair picture, like, oh, you are right. dedicated. <laughs> you are dedicated to that Ric Yo, those trouble. <laughs> yo, you said. Get the truffle fries. I'm getting this fucking Ric Flair picture. <laughs> you said order whatever you want. That's how much it's gonna cost me this fucking Ric Flair picture at a convention. Yo, because if you go see Ric Flair, like like if somebody books Ric Flair, Ric Flair likes wants like thirty thousand dollars in appearance. If I, as a wrestling promoter, wanted to book Ric Flair, I gotta pay him thirty grand and then possibly even split, maybe not even 50-50, maybe seventy thirty, where he gets the seventy, I get yeah. thirty of the gimmick money. And then he's charging them like hundred and fifty dollars a fucking signature yeah. and, and a Polaroid and all. And I'm just like, fuck that. that shit for a good dinner. <laughs> Yo, we went to Monday Night Raw at the Amelie Arena in Tampa, and this was right before. What was it before? It was before his last match. Yeah, right. The, 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 week, the weekend, before. the Monday before that weekend of, right, of right, the last right. match. His, yeah. his last the match was arcade, on, yeah. on Saturday or Sunday, yeah. and he was there in Tampa on Monday. And he apparently he lives in Tampa now. So we were like, all right, we gotta get dinner. Let's go down the block uh, by by City Walk over there. And we're, not City Walk, whatever they call that. Whatever, uh, River Walk. River Walk, like right? Yeah. We said, let's go get some dinner. And we're walking down, looking for a place to eat. And who do we see walk out of this restaurant? Rick Flair. Flair. So we gotta go. Oh, shit, woo! I said, what's up, Nate? She's looking good, guys. Says, thank you, fellas. Thank you. And I was like, fuck, man. And I wanted to get a picture of Rick Flair catching on. I was like, ah, I don't want to bother him. But he went, he gave money to the, to, to the valet. To go put money in the meat or whatever, wherever his car was. And then he went back into the restaurant. I was like, I guess what we're eating, Nico? <laughs> <laughs> and we got that nice steak <laughs> and those truffle <laughs> fries. Yo, what they ate. Might have been better than the fucking Ric Flair picture. <laughs> what they ate filet mignon? And how we I just told the waitress, I, I just, listen, we're going to eat. I just want to get a selfie with Ric Flair. <laughs> <laughs> she, so she hooked it up. We ended up getting, we're going to drop the photo. <laughs> yeah, right here, right here. Right here, right here. There it is. <laughs> <laughs> you see the cheap face? Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. <laughs> got flair. Yeah. And, and I probably paid less for that photo than <laughs> if I would have met him at a camera. And we got me a lot of it. And we got a meal. <laughs> Yo, it's funny shit, man. But damn, dude. All right, let's wrap it up. That's the Midnight Hustle. I'm Die Hard Derek. He's still trying to figure out his gimmick name. Give me, give, give, give me your Twitter handles at least. At KSG and Ego everywhere. Right there, right there, right there above my head. Because he's going to put in there and post you better. It's usually low when I got to do an upper third, but that's cool. We'll do it. I got the name tag above my head. <laughs> like a video game. Hit us up. Don't forget to like, subscribe, comment. We want to hear from you. We're going to be doing more of this shit. If you like pro wrestling, if you like movies, if you like music, we're going to do it right here on the Midnight Hustle. We out. What's on? Can you dig it? Sucker. That's Booker T. Can <laughs> you dig it? There you go. We out. Cyrus. Can you dig it?